The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for April 2023. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we've got a great show in that it is part three of the part four-part series on how to build a shelf layout and work it into a 12 by five foot beautiful layout where the shelf portion can be interchanged with other shelf layouts to keep operation interesting. Also this month, Matt Stern stops by from Bachman Industries in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he shares with us a lot of amazing new products. It's just, it's so great how Bachman is creating so many new models for the model railroad industry. Also, be sure to check out the What's Neat This Week video show podcast that we create every Saturday night, keeping you updated on what's new in the hobby, along with our great podcast crew and special guests that we have every month. And so with that, let's continue on with the rest of this April 2023 What's Neat. Hello, this is Michael Gross, and you're watching What's Neat with Ken Patterson. Now the last thing to do on this project is actually finish this turntable. So now I'm going to go over how it is that I'm going to do that with you real quick and kind of just give you a quick description of how we're going to make a gallows turntable. And that's simply an old wooden turntable bridge that's essentially like a bridge in itself. It'll be held up with guy wires, have a center post. Now I've put some cribbing in the bottom, I've got my microphone jack in the bottom, and nothing's been glued yet. I took a piece of oak, a piece of scrap wood in fact, and I drilled a 27th, 27 hole in it with a drill bit so I could fit in the microphone jack very carefully into the bottom of the wood. And that brings us to the point of where we are now, where I've got the cribbing in the bottom, this microphone jack, once everything's glued in, we're exactly where it's supposed to be. And I won't know that until I get the rails laid on this. This will fit right in there just like that, and it'll be just like the prototype, a hand-operated gallows turntable. A turntable at the end of the line where it only turns around a locomotive and they turn it by hand. Similarly, this will be done by hand. Another thing that I like to do is I like to take a piece of track, and in this case, it's Microengineering Code 70 track, and I ran it through a, actually this is Code 55 track, I ran it through a bandsaw and split the HO scale track in half. And what this allows me to do is to take this piece of track, bend it around inside the turntable pit, and create the rails that the outside of the turntable would ride on top of. And this works out really, really well. The way this just fits right in here, you can fill in the missing ties. And that also helps give stability to the bridge when it's plugged in. It'll have a point where it will not teeter-totter because this rail, if, if it's in correctly, and the only real magic to tweaking a bridge like this is simply to tweak it. Carve here, carve there, make sure everything swings around perfect. And in this case, it's a simple turntable. It's only got to match up in actually four different spots as it spins around, as opposed to a turntable with 12 tracks on it. So we can get away with a little bit on this. But all this is to do is to turn the locomotive. Now, the next thing I need to do to this, to finish this project, is I need to put a wooden decking across the top and darken everything. Then I need to put rails across the top and spike the rails in place. And then I'll build the upper structure, which will be aesthetics of the main beam of the bridge and then the cables going down at angles to the end of the bridge, holding everything from flexing and from warping on the prototype. And that would pretty much bring us to a finished turntable pit. 
So let me get through that and let me show you how this turns out. I want to give you a little further explanation that needs to be talked about on building this deck. Now I added eight by eight by 10 bridge ties across the deck. And then I also added uh, a few longer ties. I took some switch ties, some HO scale 16 foot long switch ties. And I put those on the deck as well so that I can run planks across this and make walkways so that when the engine's on here, you can actually get off the engine and have some space to walk. Plus, it'll also help with the guide wires that will be holding the bridge portion of the turntable bridge in place. In other words, we're gonna build that infrastructure, which I'll show you this on this video. In order to get the smooth deck the way I want it, I took a piece of wood and I've got sandpaper that's been uh, glued to it. And I simply take this and I put it upside down and I work it back and forth real slow on the sandpaper until all the ties are exactly the same height. And then I restained it, put it in the oven and baked it for a little while. And it gave me to the point where I'm at now where I'm going to take some narrow gauge rails and some contact cement and glue the rails in place where they need to be. And then I'll drill out the holes with a Dremel and a small drill bit and we'll start spiking the rail in place. And that should go pretty quick. And uh, I'll just follow up a little bit further as we make progress to explain these steps so that you understand exactly how I'm, I'm building this freelanced uh, gallows turntable bridge. Now that we've got the bridge deck built, I'm test fitting the turntable into position. And if you look inside here, the railroad ties, I've glued those in to create a base underneath. And I was able to take the nut that is on the microphone jack and actually tighten it up a little bit snug with these ties. So the microphone jack is temporarily mounted that the base of the turntable is plugging into. Okay. Now I'm using contact adhesive to glue the rail down. And because I've got it set up in a position and the height is all matching up, I've glued down the first rail with contact cement and I double checked it with a couple of track gauges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue down the second rail real time for you so you can see how I do this. Now I've got about a mile of main line on my railroad in narrow gauge that is not spiked down yet. I put a third rail on my HF scale main line and it's glued in place with this weld wood contact adhesive. And this stuff, the train gets run almost every day and none of that rail is coming loose. So this stuff is very dependable, but we're still gonna go ahead and spike, drill out holes and spike this bridge for the turntable, even though I know the glue would hold by itself. So I put the glue on, I'm gonna smooth it with my finger just a little bit here. And I'm going to use the track gauges to double check my work and line it up. Now I've cut these rails just a little bit longer than what they need to be so that when I spin it around I can line up everything to this track and then cut the rails to the precise length that they need to be. And then for the track over here, the other track that we're going to do, all I've got to do is put it in and cut off the length of these rails to match the turntable once it's set up with this track. We're lucky we don't have 12 tracks all the way around because it's only a gallows turntable, a turn of locomotive. I've only got two tracks primarily to worry about lining up to. And if you look, this is working out really perfect right here. I've got these track gauges on here. I'm gonna put a couple weights on it, let it set. And then it'll be time to drill some holes and spike it. I use the number 69 drill bit on a Dremel to drill the holes before spiking. And then what I like to do is I take a spike, put it in a pair of needle nose pliers. I like to dip it in this super glue. I'm using thick super glue. And that'll help ensure that the spike won't slide out 
of its hole when it gets set in place. So you've got two things holding this now. You've got the context, contact cement and you've got the spikes. So I guarantee these rails, they're not going to go anywhere. This is a very good way to do this. When the super glue sets up, everything's really tight. So now I need to put on the planking after I get all the spike down. And I'm also going to put on some uh, railings on the edge here, not hand railings, but probably six by six or eight by eight uh, posts along the edge to create a, a framework for the turntable so that the uh, guy wires coming off the center truss will have support. It'll, it'll, it's literally a bridge. It'll be built just like a, a bridge. So let me walk you through the rest of the process that it took to finish the turntable side of our diorama. I added 12 by 12 framing to the sides of the bridge and I drilled holes on the top and on the bottom with a number 69 drill bit for the nut and bolt castings to fit into these holes. I applied super glue to the nut casting stems and I placed them in the drilled holes on both sides underneath and top of the turntable using tweezers. Now I used a Dremel and a wire brush to clean and weather off the rail so I could uh, solder power, power wires to this portion of the bridge. I soldered these wires to each of the rails on the bridge with rosin core solder. I then soldered the other end of the one inch long power feed wires to the microphone jacks soldering leads and this then allowed the bridge to be powered up when it's plugged in. I applied walking planks on the bridge using Elmer's wood glue to attach the 3 by 12 uh, wood planks. Now these were pre-stained before application. I cut 12 by 12 stock lumber to assemble the bridge's upper truss work. I very carefully cut the angles and put this together. I used steel stock that I had on hand that squ got squared edges on it, so I was able to square these pieces in a steel box until the glue dried. Now, I went ahead and test fit the upper structure on the turntable bridge in place just to ensure a good fit before gluing everything together. And again, I used Elmer's wood glue to glue the tower structure to the turntable bridge. Now, I attached brass I-beam stock along the top of the tower, and then I bent 132nd inch stock rail uh, brass stock is what I used to create the effect of four guy wires under tension holding the turntable ends up evenly spaced just like on the prototype. I then soldered the guy wires to the I-beams on top of the towers just to secure everything into place. Now this is going to be really strong and permanent in the event that anybody operating this turntable handles it roughly. It'll survive, you know, complete destruction. I used a hot wire uh, cutter to evenly cut around the turntable pit. I wanted to finish this area and I, what I did was I put in, I wanted to make room for a line of railroad ties that would frame the outer edge of the pit walls. I used wood glue to glue these ties around the outer walls of the pit, forming the turntable pit walls. I had to make sure everything cleared the bridge during the rotation, so you know I checked things, I spun it around. And this all went together pretty well, and it really looked pretty nice. I stacked the railroad ties right in the center of the bowl of the pit. I made a square, similarly to what I've seen in prototype photographs. And this helped hold the microphone jack into place, and it formed the center base and pivot point for the turntable bridge. I then refit the jack into the base, making sure everything cleared the bridges, swinging it around, plugged it in, spun it around, made sure also that I had good electrical contact. Then I finished up the whole scene by simply placing the approach tracks in the areas where they needed to be, double checking the swing clearance again for each track lead that I put down. You need to get the alignment perfect for smooth running on this part. 
And then it was time to put down some dirt and scenic the scene. So I used sifted dirt, I put down some weeds in the pit area, I added cinder ballast along the track, gluing everything into place using a very, a very wet application of Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement. And that pretty much finished off the diorama. So let me show you now how this operates, how well it works. I've got a small C19 ready to be pulled onto the turntable. And as long as everything's lined up, which you do by hand, Okay, a little dirty track going on there. Then I spin it around, just like the prototype. And this thing swings pretty nice. I tested it a few times. Make sure the track's clean before you videotape, right? Now I gotta remember to flip the double pull, double pull switch. Otherwise, I'm gonna have a short, and I'm not gonna make it across the bridge. So I flip this switch right here. Where is that switch? Right there, I felt it flip. As long as I line this up, this should run right off the bridge with no problem. Just like that, no dirty track there. So you've got a really cool asset now for the operation of the diorama to be able to turn around a train when you get on top of the hill and you wanna go back down. So next, I wanna work on a little area of the layout on the other end where I plan to put a few buildings, a freight station, uh, a train station, and also I found a home for the water tank down there. I'd like to cut a road across the tracks and build a little area for the wagons and the horses and the Model Ts to line up. So let's just cover that portion next. I'm using a Stanley Sureform planer to scrape out an area here where I've decided to add some roads. Now, if I, I've already put down some railroad ties in between the rails where there'll be a dirt road crossing over the tracks into an area where I've decided to put a small train station and another area over here where I'm going to put a freight house. It's actually a BTS train station, but I'm going to use it as a freight house in this area. So you've got your water tank, all the amenities of an area. And I think it's going to work out really well. The roads, the dirt roads, the smoothness of that all. And it'll give a reason, a place to take the oars and drop off the oars or a place for passengers in addition to what we've already got, what we've already built up here. So just further progress on this diorama. I think she's almost finished, color the buildings, and we're really moving right along on this. You know, nothing's ever completely finished, but I can see this changing. I can see this evolving over time as time goes on. I chose to build a BTS Deerlick station kit, but I wanted it to more or less be a freight depot because its lines look perfect for that. So I started by assembling uh, the walls of the structure kit just like we did the uh, single stall engine house. I chose to paint this structure with oxide red flocal paint. I wanted the structure to look well kept. I really didn't want it to look weathered or old. I wanted it to look in really good condition. I'm working on the trim now on the structure, putting all the pieces of white parts that we painted. And all I'm simply doing is I'm dipping my dental pick into the Elmer's, uh, the wood glue here. And you simply put the parts right where they belong flush with the edges. And this is why we painted the edges so that they would be lighter in color on the inside so they would match. I'm also working on the windows. I've got all my windows, which are self-stick, attached to a piece of acetate. And you simply take the knife and you, you cut these out, which I've done to these. 
the main window, and the top sash, and you assemble them together with another drop of glue just to the corners. And these things fit into each opening absolutely perfectly. They just a little glue around the edges and you're in business. So these windows and all this trim should be enjoyable and take about an hour to do. And then we'll start working on the roof. So upon finally getting all the windows in place and all the trim glued pretty much to the outside of the building, now I think it's time to assemble the base. So I'm gonna use goo and I'm gonna glue all these posts onto the plexiglass. That's how it's going to attach. And the building itself simply gets glue put around the bottom edge and then it's going to fit in the grooves of the foundation here. And you don't want to you don't want to force anything, but if you push it down, all the parts are cut just right on this kit and it fits real nice. Same with the other half of the building. I'll run a stream of glue around that and it slides over the base and now everything's level and flush on the plexiglass. I'll put some weights inside the building to hold everything down while the glue sets up. Just like this. I'm just This is a test fitting before the glue and it fits beautifully on the plexiglass base. And then after that process, we'll start on the roof and this back porch section. I've got the parts for the back porch section already pre-painted and ready to come out of the laser cut stock. And the roof fits together really nice. Each section interlocks. And this has got a porch on it, which will dictate how close I can get the tracks to this building. Just like that. So that's what I need to do next. Glue the base down and assemble this roof just like we did the test fit. And this will work out really nice. Now let me explain to you how we're going to do the roof. The first thing you do is you glue the roof sections together and they interlock very nicely. All the pieces fit. And then they've got braces, these triangular nice wooden braces. I just put a little glue on the edges of those. And those will help the roof retain its shape. And the roof can be completely removable all the time. This roof won't be glued onto the structure. So you'll always have access to be able to put furniture or lighting inside the structure at a later date. Okay. And so this would sit right on top of there. I've got all the roof brackets stuck into the front wall here. And this would sit right into place on top of there. Now this roof, in reality, is going to be a metal roof. So the way you do that and the way the kit comes with all the parts to do this is it comes with some evergreen styrene, very thin scribed styrene. So you can place that on top to form the metal roof. And then there's a lot of small pieces of fine styrene strips. And each one of these will have to be laid in place and then touched with a glue needle. So I get a little bit of glue on each one and have a nice clean metal roof all the way across. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to paint this metal roof silver and then go ahead and hit it with some oil paints to rust it out. And that'll pretty much finish the structure. You get all those pieces on, the styrene comes straight and you crease it, you fold it here. 
to fit the angles of the roof. Just like that. And that would complete the roof on the structure. And again, it's all on a piece of plexiglass, so I got a heavy weight inside of this right now. It's very heavy. But you can see the roof line and now how that's going to look. I'm using a hot foam cutter to cut out the area where the plexiglass base that we put underneath the freight station. This base is about an eighth of an inch thick, so I've got to cut into the foam about an eighth of an inch. And this doesn't have to be perfect. I've just got to have the high points and fill in and just kind of tweak it a little bit and then drop the base into position after I'm finished carving this out with the hot foam cutter. And I found this small BTS structure this really nice small DTNI standard station kit that they've got in HO scale. And this looks like a one evening project, seriously. There's not a whole lot to this. I'm gonna start assembling the walls and then come up with a color to paint this structure. The instructions are very, way very well laid out with good photography. This one should simply fall together. And I really can't wait to get started on this because I really, really want to finish this off with some, you know, turn of the century people and some lighting on the inside and just make for just a very interesting kit. I've already got the space picked out on the diorama. As you can see in this video, I've got the footprint of the base of the structure laid out where I want to put it, and it's a very small footprint. So let's get started on this, and we'll see how this project turns out. I think it's going to be a fun one to build. I started the uh, station by simply assembling the base as per the instructions. And this thing, I haven't even put glue on this yet and it goes together really nice. The next step was to assemble the exterior walls and they're simply falling together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the walls, stain the woodwork and stain the floorboards and the foundation before I glue these walls together. And I assembled the walls using a little bit of Elmer's Carpenter wood glue. Now that the glue's dried on the outside walls of the train station, it's time to paint this puppy. Now I've got it all masked off with blue paint so that all the stained woodwork will be protected from the white paint. I'm gonna paint the station and all the windows and trim white. So I'm not gonna do anything fancy on this and I'm not gonna weather this structure. I'm spraying float wool, uh, lacquer based paint at about 20 pounds of air pressure. And let's see a spot I missed here, hold on a second. Now, if I do get any paint on the stain, it's easy to go back and restain over it since the stain is a good dark color. I got a little mist on there. Another way to remove paint real easy is to use a uh, paintbrush with just a little lighter fluid in it. It'll take the paint right off and leave any cured paint in place. Now, there's going to be trim that goes all the way around all of this different woodwork, so it'll cover up any imperfections. But this should be a relatively straightforward paint job. And I'm going to paint all the trim the same way. Now I've got this paint thinned. It's thinned about, uh, I want to say 40% paint and the rest lacquer thinner so that it doesn't go on too heavy. It goes on nice and thin. This Iowata airbrush, I kind of like it. It's a HB, HP BCS Eclipse 
from Iowata. It uh, gives a nice even spray. Very controllable double action airbrush. As I pull back the trigger, I can have more paint. As I let the trigger go forward, nothing comes out. I pull back and the paint comes out just like that. Very controllable, good feeling airbrush. I like to put these Pache bottles on the bottom of them because that way the airbrush can always stand up when I'm using it. And the one ounce bottles, the airbrushes always seem to fall over. If I'm spraying very, very little paint, I'll use a cup. But for these windows and all this whitewashing, I need the three ounce bottles. These have got self stick on the back so that we can put the windows together with the acetate, which is what we're going to do next after all these pieces dry. Now to assemble the roof on this train station, it's a really easy design. You simply bend it into the form of a roof. It's already got a pre-cut. And then I take the Elmer's wood glue and I put it on the inside where all of the wooden trusses are going to fit on this. So this will go together very quickly like the rest of the kit. I've, I've got very little time. I mean, I've spent a few days in between other projects working on this station but all the time added up to build it to this point, I bet I'm into it for less than, I want to say I'm into this thing for less than two and a half to three hours. So this is seriously one of those easy weekend projects. Once this glue sets up, and this is nice, then I'll paint the underneath eaves white to match the rest of the station. All right, so I've changed my mind on the windows. I want to paint the windows green. So I pulled out some reading green. I pulled out the cup, the Pache cup, which fits just fine on the airbrush, on the Siwata airbrush. I'm going to take these windows that we previously just painted white, and I'm going to spray this reading green on them. Just to add a little color to the station. I'm not going to do all the trim, just these windows. These windows have got the stick them on there. What I'm doing now is making sure I'm getting the size of the mullions. And this will look nice. This will add just a touch of color to the brown and white and then the green. I took out the door because I didn't want to paint the door. Now that we've got our train station colored with the colors and the paint on it, I want to show you something that I've done to this. This is not in the instructions. I built a base for this out of plexiglass. Simple base, painted it with a little camouflage brown paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to laminate over this with woodwork, with uh, probably 2x12s, and make flooring all the way across so that you'll have a station platform in addition to the station building. So after I have that completed, the last thing we've got to do to finish up this kit is simply put all the trim on it, put in the windows, and finish off the roof. So let me work on that finish this up and show you how I did all those steps to finish this project. Now I want to walk you through the rest of the process to completely finish the train station. I cut out the green windows for the station with a really sharp razor knife. I took my time on this to cut them straight so that they would fit perfectly into the building. I used the peel and stick backing on the windows and I stuck them onto the clear acetate. I put all of them on there at one time and then I used a knife to trim around the side edges of the window frames, freeing them from the acetate. I cut out all the trim pieces and window panes and door frames and I laid them all out so that I could see them and easily get to them. This really sped up the assembly process for me. 
I applied wood glue with a dental tool in a small amount and carefully fit the trim pieces into place, the door frames, the window trim, all around the structure. I used wood glue and I dipped the chair rail trim into the glue, literally. I put, you know, a good amount of glue on and wiped off the excess so that I could carefully put the chair rail all the way around the outside of the structure, cutting each piece to size. Using a dental pick, I applied small amounts of glue to the window edges, and I carefully fit these into the model. Again, these were laser cut, so they fit really accurate and they literally fell into place. This part of the structure is kind of fun to see it go together. It looks good and you can always add tape for window shades later. I know this looks obnoxious, but I used hot melt glue to attach the station to the base instantly. I mean, saving a lot of dry time and it really worked out well. As I add the lower trim to the station, you can see how the base helped me to keep a clean fit along the bottom edge where the planking was. That's why I added the bottom when I did to this building. I glued the rafters to the underside of the cardboard roof, placing each one carefully to match the grooves on top of the model's walls. I took my time on this to get this part right and even, just to make it look good. I painted the eaves under the roof white to match the trim on the structure. This really made the model pop visually when the roof was put on top of the model. I used Master Creations cedar shingles. This didn't come with the kit. I, I got these as an add-on. And I randomly colored the shingles with various shades of brown colored pencils before the shingles were even pulled off of the peel and strip material. This will give us a great random color effect when everything is put into place. I unpeeled the shingles and carefully lined them up along the roof. You need to keep these uniform and straight when you're doing this process. I drew straight parallel lines along the roof as a guide to help me keep things straight. I used a razor knife to cut the shingles in the valleys as they went on and they went through the L-shaped pattern just onto the dormer. This kept everything in even and looking really nice. I installed the building's smokestack and colored this, uh, you know, with a brown color, like a boxcar red color. This kind of finished the building. I'll add window shades and packages and people and details to the platform. And otherwise, it's pretty much finished. But it, it's one of those things where it looks, uh, it took about six and a half hours of building time for us to get to this point. So it was really an easy kit to build. I really enjoyed this one. I carved the foam to fit the base of both the freight house and the train station so they both fit flush and stayed into place in the scene, awaiting interior and exterior lights sometime down the road. Now I scratch built the roof over the freight depot part of the building. I used uh, board by board methods using uh, stock lumber two by sixes just to make it look like uh, it's an under construction appearance. I made a dirt carriage road where the railroad crossing uh, was to be, and I used sifted dirt from my backyard to create this road. I then, I then uh, worked this dirt with a uh, artist brush. I used artist brushes to finish it smooth and even with the wood around the rails. Take your time on this. This part should look really good. It's, it's, it's an area we're gonna spend a lot of time watching the trains. I sprayed Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement onto the road and the area around it, um, just gluing everything into place. And as you watch this process, you may notice the background scenery. I said a few minutes ago in this video that the diorama would evolve. Well, it did. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. We're gonna talk about the evolution of creating a round loop, literally turning this into a, a layout unto itself. And so with that, that ends part three of the series as we built this beautiful turntable and a few nice buildings to complement the shelf layout. Now in part four, we're gonna build a larger five foot by 12 foot loop layout that's operationally in that the shelf layout will fit into place. So look forward to that in next month's May What's Neat video.
So with that, thank you for watching this episode of April's What's Neat, and now we're going to do the Bachman interview. For this April segment for What's Neat, I've got Matt Stern all the way from beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the room here. Matt, how are you today? I'm doing great, Ken. How are you? So there's a lot of exciting things going on at Bachman Industries, and today you're going to talk about some of that. Absolutely. So I'm going to start off with uh, some products that have actually just arrived. Um, one of these is uh, something that has been very much anticipated by a lot of people. And it's a little big, so I'm going to try and fit it on the screen here. Wow. But this is our Daylight Special HO Scale train set. And uh, this set is, uh, I think it's just, it's a fantastic looking set. Um, it obviously replicates the uh, Southern Pacific Daylight passenger trains that ran in uh, Southern California and actually all the way up to Oregon. Um, and it comes with the uh, GS4 locomotive, which comes with smoke. Um, it comes with a uh, smooth side baggage car and then a passenger car and an observation car, which both have interior lighting. That is beautiful. It is, and it's, it's something that we're very excited to see. And moving to a uh, larger scale over here, we have the uh, Evans box cars. These, um, at this point, when we're shooting this, is not shown up yet, but by the time this airs, this will be most likely um, shooting, coming to retailers. So um, these are our Evans boxes. I'm going to grab one here. These have fantastic detail on them. Um, you can see all the uh, posts and all the details on them here. They also have end of train devices, which uh, actually function on them, which is, I think, one of the coolest features. Wow. So is that something that can be ordered separate or does that come on every boxcar? So that's something that comes on all the boxcars in this release. We are gonna be coming out with more later on that don't have that. So obviously you don't want that on every car on your train, you just want it on the rear. So uh, you will be able to have full consoles of these with one of those at the end. And if you wanna add that to a different car, we also will be offering, and I believe it actually might already be available, um, the uh, end of train device on its own as well. That is cool. And I, I am just noticing that this box is upside down. This is straight out of show stock. So sometimes when we're done with the show, we're just packing things away. We don't necessarily put them in the right way around. Perfect. Then something else, which I think is kind of exciting, um, which has come in in the last couple of months, which we haven't really talked about before on this show, I don't believe, is the uh, Five Bay Roundhouse with Nickel Silver Easy Track. Um, this is the first roundhouse that we've ever offered for our Easy Track range. Um, it's designed to go with our DCC uh, turntable, and uh, it's just a really cool looking piece. That is beautiful. I remember years ago that started out something like that in the Thomas line. Absolutely, yeah. So we had the uh, Tidmouth sheds in the Thomas line, and, and this, this, is, this is very similar to that in many ways, um, but it's been designed to look like a, uh, you know, the kind of roundhouse that you would find on, on a standard U.S. railroad. Boy, you're going to sell a lot of those. I mean, that is something that a lot of people, you know, they, they debate whether or not they want to do this, but with something like that, it would make it easy. Absolutely. And it's also a very easy to put together kit. Um, it doesn't require any glue or special tools. It just snaps right together. That is awesome. And another locomotive um, that we've actually just received into stock recently, um, this should be arriving at retailers right about now is the uh, GP7. This is our latest run of the HO scale GP7. And we've done some paint schemes here that we haven't released in the past. Okay. Um, this is the uh, the Conrail example. We have Santa Fe in the, uh, the freight blue scheme. And then we also have CNO, which I don't have a sample of here. And we have Amtrak, which uh, I have out of the packaging here. That's very cool. Are those DCC ready or do they come with decoders? These are DCC ready. Um, they uh, they're, they're, they have an 8-pin plug. They're uh, essentially you know ready to go if you get your own DCC decoder for them. Right. And they also have the housing if you want to add sound as well. Oh my gosh, you guys are always thinking of everything. That's what we try and do. Um, and we also have some, uh, I have some new uh, samples here as well for upcoming products. Okay. So we have the latest sample here of our uh, Train Sim World 2 ACS64. Okay. Uh, we had an earlier sample, which we had on display at some of the shows this winter, and uh, this is 
probably going to be our final sample, I believe. Uh, so this is probably the closest um, it's looked so far to uh, how it's going to look when it comes out. And we're, we're very excited about it. We think it looks fantastic. We actually talked about that look motive on our podcast sometime back around March the 4th on that show oh, yeah. because we talked about rap and how the railroads are using rap now to create the imagery. Yeah, and it's funny you should mention that because uh, that's one of the things we had to consider when we were designing this model. Um, you know, typically we have a uh, kind of a metallic sheen on our locomotives, and uh, when we were developing this, we realized we couldn't use that for this um, because with the wrap, you know, you have more of a matte appearance on it. Yes. So we've, we've done our best to try and replicate that in the paint scheme as well. That's going to be beautiful and well-received. Yes, absolutely. Um, staying in the, uh, in the Amtrak theme here, we know a lot of people are going to be very excited to see these. These are the uh, first samples of our ALC 42 in N scale, fully painted. Nice. This is the uh, the Phase Seven example. Uh, we also have the uh, Phase Six version here. Okay. And of course, we have the uh, really fantastic looking Day One as well. That is awesome, and I've got some of your HO scale versions on the table here. I noticed that. Yeah, they, they're looking great. And uh, last but not least here, got a few uh, HO scale samples to show you. These are uh, all cabooses. We also have a uh, new sample of our, uh, our upcoming CSX wide vision caboose as well. And this is going to be the latest addition to this range. That's great. And it comes with metal wheel sets. It does. Metal wheel sets. Um, all of our cars now come with body mounted uh, Easy Mate Mark II couplers. Okay. Uh, so they're compatible with any couplers that you have that are uh, knuckle coupler designs. And uh, they uh, they work really well. I've, I've never had a problem with them. No, that's fantastic, Matt. It's always exceeding, exciting to see the new products that you guys are offering. It's just amazing to me the amount of products and the accuracy of what Bachman Industries has been creating in the last decade. That's what we strive, try and try try and strive to do. No, fantastic. So is that everything for April this month? That is everything for April. Um, there is obviously more. Actually, there is one more item I can show you. Okay. <laughs> All right. And you may have talked about this before, but I'm just going to bring it back again here. And this is our large-scale Bethlehem Steel 100-ton hopper. Wow. Now, that's a car where you can't just buy one. Oh, absolutely not. No, you need to train of these. Yes. Oh, that'll look fantastic behind the Dash 9s. Absolutely, yeah. And the Dash 9, speaking of the Dash 9s, they are shipping now. Um, they will absolutely be in retailers at the time you're watching this video. And uh, yeah, like you said, these will go fantastic with them and with the Evans boxcars as well. Absolutely, Matt. Matt, thank you so much for sharing with the viewers of what's neat, what's new there at Bachman. And with that, that is this segment for April's What's Neat. All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois or order online at LombardHobby.com. Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at BachmanTrains.com.